Hello and welcome back to another edition of uh, RevOps Charlie's Demo Day uh, video series where I get the opportunity to speak to uh, technology vendors that support the revenue uh, tech stack. And today I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome Callum McManus from Cognizant to the series. So welcome, Callum. Thank you, Charlie. Good to be here. Thank you for having me on. And I'm really looking forward to this one because uh, data is just at the heart of every company's uh, outbound and inbound uh, strategy. So it's going to be great to learn uh, a little bit more about it. Um, so maybe for those that don't know Cognizant and uh, just about yourself, be able to uh, share a little bit about your role at Cognizant and maybe a little introduction into Cognizant and what the company does. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Charlie. Um, so Cognizant, we specialize in being an international B2B contact data provider. So we help go-to-market teams identify, find new business opportunities, but also unlock certain pipeline challenges that they're having, um, typically around about top of funnel um, issues, but also some in-deal challenges that we can help with too. Um, I've been with the business for just over four and a half years, uh, and I'm now a enterprise account manager. So my role is working with some of Cognizant's largest customers, um, helping them grow and um, establish well-defined go-to-market processes through Cognizant. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I always love a website that tells you exactly uh, what it does, and I had to write it down. Um, so on the front page of your website, we give you mobile numbers and B2B emails of people you want to do business with. Uh, it's like no sort of vagaries, like this is, this is it. It's, it's contact data to help you uh, with, with B2B sales. Exactly that, exactly that. Straight to the point. It's quite a simple um, solution. Um, so no point complicating it with, with lots of buzzwords mm. like we maybe used to, but it's now very focused on on what we offer. Yeah, it does what it says on the tin. So um, you talked a little bit about obviously enterprise there, but when you think across uh, Cognizant, like what's the, the type of uh, company that is a great fit for uh, the products and services that you're offering? We're quite fortunate, right? What we really help with is top of funnel um, go to market strategy. Um, so previously we've had some good fit industries, but as things have changed with COVID, those industries have become broader and broader and broader. Really it's about the people that we help and the people or the departments that we help most, uh, first and foremost, sales and marketing, right? They're the ones going out there trying to find new customers, um, who are challenges around like go to market strategy and maybe expanding into new industries or since COVID's happened, maybe they've changed their ICP. So they're like the two departments we help first and foremost, but then also behind that, there's also the go to market operations, which is like the sales ops, the rev ops, the marketing ops, the people who are orchestrating those plays are really key mm -hmm. to, um, the ICP that we help at the moment. So. Industries less so, it's much more of a ICP focus, so types of departments and people that we can help. Okay. So, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you're tech or uh, manufacturing or healthcare, you know, if you're trying to sell to B2B, then uh, exactly. you need some raw data to be able to prospect into. Yeah, precisely that. And, uh, you know, from my experience, whenever I hear Cognizant, uh, uh, we think about Europe or European uh, companies um, in terms of the space that you're in. Um, is that just a little bit about sort of the heritage of where uh, Cognizant was founded and where it's come from? Or are you doing something you know, different that the US companies aren't doing uh, to, to get this uh, European contact data? Yeah, I'm glad you touched on that, Charlie. Um, it's, it's a combination of both. So Cognizant as a business was founded in London. If you look at all the other competitors in our space, the vast majority were founded in North America. And because of GDPR coming into play, what happened there is it was very easy for North American vendors to specialize and focus in North American data, where all the big enterprises were being built. And there was a huge demand for contact data, huge like sales culture. Cognizant was a little bit different, founded in London, naturally because of where we initially started we were picking up a lot of business within london uk european region and we had to be gdpr compliant from the outset but the edge that that gave us versus the rest of the market 
is we'd already built these compliant processes that helped us acquire customers in Europe. It then helped us quite cleverly build our database to be truly international. We knew that we had an edge over the rest of the market. So what that now changes today to sometimes a narrative people see um, Cognizum of being like a European provider, we now are truly an international provider. So we're really trying to make big gains in markets like APAC, LATAM, certain areas of Europe where other providers haven't had the coverage. So that's really what gives Cognizum that international edge. Mm. Are, are there any particular nuances about getting, I don't know, uh, Turkish contact data uh, other than you know the, t- the titles are different because it's a different language? Is there anything more complicated than that going on? It gets even more complicated than that. You you know, we have the, in like UK and, and US, you have the typical places you'd go to find business contacts, which would be things like LinkedIn. But in certain parts of um, the Asia Pacific region, LinkedIn isn't adopted, right? And that's quite mm-hmm. common in things like the Middle East. Um, Germany used to have a big preference on using Zing as their business platform. So we've had to come across and find new ways to identify contacts which has been really challenging. And then when you go into markets like Asia Pacific, and this is why a lot of go-to-market teams struggle with this, there's so many different languages and it's difficult to pick up all this data. Um, So we've had a bit of a head start in trying to figure this out, um, which gives us that little edge um, over the market. When you look at um, uh, public SaaS companies, they're still going to take 60 or 70 percent of their r is going to come from the us so you know it makes sense if you're targeting that company that those types of companies from the us then actually the bulk of your um you know your contact data is going to be in the us as well so it takes someone to be based here and to understand that europe is not just a collection of states uh, to be able to, to to look at each of those um on their own merits Yeah, for sure. And also, if we look at the US market, because of how many big businesses and how publicly available the information has been previously, it's quite an easy market traditionally to to acquire that data. So Mm -hmm. for a lot of um, tools out there, there's, you know, there's a lot of publicly available data for that. However, when we are looking at the international markets, this is where we see differences in how go-to-market teams perform is that the international team has to go through five to six extra hurdles in order to reach a customer. And that typically starts with, it's a lot more difficult for an international go-to-market team just to engage with a customer versus what they see in the US. So that's why we're, we're trying to break down those barriers to support those teams more. And so I'm um, thinking about your sort of target customer and, and you mentioned that it's helping those sales and marketing teams or maybe the operations teams that are trying to provide a, a set of data. Um, how are they doing this if they're not a Cognizant customer? What, what's the alternative or the status quo? I think a lot of people who will be watching this will be familiar with how manual and how time consuming it can be um, without a tool like a Cognizant, right? So if we go back to, to years ago, like the, the days of using yellow pages and picking up the phone or using an Excel spreadsheet, that's hours and hours and hours out of your week just to find contact numbers. That was a time where you could call up an office number and potentially get passed on to the right person. Now that everyone's working from home or the vast majority of, of workforces are remote and moving around the world so constantly, it's about the specific type of data point you need in order to reach that person quickly. Because if you're still relying on an office number, your success rate is going to be really low. Your time input is going to be really high and your frustration is going to be equally as high. So, you know, it's about spending less time prospecting. And when you are prospecting, having accurate data points that are going to reach those people as fast as possible is how go to market has moved. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, and we talk about B2B, but it's P2P, it's person to person. And um, yeah. uh, everyone's got a mobile. I don't have a landline anymore. Uh, I've just moved my parents off a landline eventually. And it's like, you know, that's just not the way that you're going in. And if you are calling up a company directly, you just know you're hitting uh, gatekeepers and, uh, and IVRs and uh, call routing, uh, as opposed to getting in touch with that, that individual um, directly. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and and if, in, sorry, go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if you are doing that, your your competitors probably aren't. Um, so it's about yeah, keeping it, up. Yeah. Your exactly. Yeah, and, to that. and so, uh, yeah, thinking about the, um, uh, maybe the revenue operations uh, person that you're working with or, the, or whoever is, is um, you know, managing that operational side of things, um, what problems are you, do you solve for them uh, as someone's onboarding onto Cognizant? What's, what's the process and, and what are they getting out of it? Hmm. It obviously depends the stage of business that you're dealing with, but some of the typical challenges we see, let's say from like a go to market strategy standpoint, um, often the RevOps team will be um, responsible for ensuring that there's the correct account data within the CRM mm. in order to plan and strategize territories and for the sales and marketing teams to target those accounts. So something we can help do is automate and ensure that that account data is correct and up to date. So that just ensures that sales and marketing teams have the right resources in order to reach their target accounts. The same to be said for the contact side of things, right? We're ensuring that those accounts have the right contacts. And again, this is gonna be an automated process with some of the new tools we have. It's gonna save RevOps teams a lot of time just ensuring that there's regular processes for automating the correct account data, but also the correct contact data. So that just mm -hmm. ensures that there's a better op operating rhythm when it comes to using marketing campaigns, but also having like an SDR team who are actioning inbounds or going after certain set accounts. So it's a very, very organized process. Yeah. And I'm sure anyone that's watching from uh, Europe uh, has got GDPR in their mind. Um, so as, a, as an operations professional that's loading up uh, or giving access to all of this data, what's the, what's the process about ensuring that it's, it's GDPR, a GDPR compliant and people have sort of opted in? Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, like when using Cognizant, one of the key things people don't really consider with other data providers is ensuring that when reaching out in Europe, those phone numbers have been cross-referenced against do not contact lists across mm. all different European countries. So something we ensure is that we're regularly checking those phone numbers against do not contact lists in different European countries. So that mm. means that when a rep does go to pick up the phone through Cognizant, they are not going to be calling a number where there could potentially be a fine. Mm. Then on the email side of things, it's ensuring all that information is business email only. So it's person specific yeah. business, all right? That means, and this depends on the specific country you're reaching out to in Europe. For example, if you're reaching out to someone based in DAC, the process should be to be calling those individuals to gain their opted in consent before going down a marketing campaign route. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that we have the mobile numbers in place in order to do that. And then let's say for the UK example, it's ensuring that we have checked those phone numbers against do not contact lists but Cognizant and the customer also provides an opportunity to opt out. So we have the processes in place to ensure that if the team is going to market in different countries, we can safeguard and ensure that they are doing that properly. Yeah, yeah, no, that, um, uh, that makes sense. And um, uh, so maybe, I mean, if you're, if you're up for it, maybe it'd be great to, to share your screen and I'm sure that'll come up with some other, some questions about how, how you're approaching it. Yeah, for sure. Let me just share my screen. Cool. So there is a few different use cases with Cognizant. Like I said, typically we see three different departments using the tool. Mm. First and foremost, it will be those sales, but also marketing teams. When we're looking at sales teams, and if we put you in a position of a sales rep who is going out there to find people within the target audience and bring them in for meetings, so that real like hunter or SDR type role, mm. typically we see these individuals do the majority of their work on LinkedIn. So just a nice and easy place, and you'll see this with a lot of tools, is that LinkedIn Chrome extension workflow. That just means if we're finding good fit prospects on LinkedIn, we're able to quickly get their contact data. The opposite to this or not having this in play would be You'd find a good fit person on LinkedIn. You'd attempt to message them. It's an extremely saturated space, LinkedIn, especially with messages. 
or you're going on the company website and getting the um, office number. The difference here is access to mobile numbers and person specific business emails. That's like a direct channel into having an attempt at conversation with that prospect. So at your fingertips, you've got the right information you need to reach those individuals. Again, LinkedIn Sales Navigator makes up a huge staple of hunters, sales development reps, account executives, the general sale salesperson's bread and butter for finding key contacts in their target accounts, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very good way of finding the right people, but a bit like a map without directions, you can't reach these people very well unless you have the contact information. So this yeah. Chrome extension now provides an automated process, Charlie, of getting the contact information for everyone in this list. If your rep has already put in hours of work into getting all these LinkedIn sales navigator lists, but they don't have any contact data, this is going to save them huge amounts of time just to quickly get that. We can now take all of these individuals from sales navigator and export them into our like next step, whether that next step is the sales engagement platform, the CRM, or just simply lists in Cognizant. We have all of these integrations built in just to create that seamless workflow and ensure that we're moving these people to the right places. So that's the bread and butter from a mm. sales perspective. Anything that's like raised an eyebrow there, Charlie? No, that's, um, so it's sort of bridging the gap really between the publicly available information, um, but then helping an SDR or an AE to, uh, to be able to execute on this list that they've built. Just make mm, it really mm, easy. For sure. Yeah. And this as well shouldn't just be left at the, at the top of funnel where we're seeing huge amounts of success now is with account executives and account managers, right? Mm -hmm. So mid deal, you've had a really good demo or you've had a really good first meeting with a prospect. You've started asking questions like who else does this impact within your team or your organization? You should then be using Cognizant to find those stakeholders really easily. So we can just use this example. Sorry, if I move back over to uh, normal LinkedIn to start multi-threading decision makers within the existing account. So I've had a meeting with Callum. It went really well. We identified that it's going to impact some marketing stakeholders. I can start finding all the marketing stakeholders, maybe while I'm on the meeting with that prospect and saying, hey, you mentioned this impacts marketing. Would it be possible to have a conversation with Alice DeCorsi, who leads your marketing department? Mm. So this is how account managers and account executives are using this to multi-thread their deals and be really dynamic on calls. And if they aren't getting those referrals off the back of the call, which happens sometimes, they can pick up the contact information from Cognizant and use their nuggets of wisdom that they've just got from that meeting to push a second meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I always think is... Um, uh as an AE, you want to have this peripheral vision around the core people that you're speaking to. And if, if you're lazy and you just say, is there anyone else that I should be speaking with? Well, a customer's rightly not going to offer any of that up. But by saying, as you did there, yeah. you know, uh, typically in a deal like this, uh, at some point you'd be bringing in Alice. Uh, so why don't I prepare some notes or introduce you to, to her? Um, uh, and alternatively, just dropping Alice a note, just saying, I'm sure you're aware of this deal, just putting it on your radar, I'll give you some updates, no need to reply. Just this sort of soft, uh, giving that visibility so that when you need to call on that mm. uh, relationship later on, or introduce one of your execs, uh, you've already already built that that soft relationship. Yeah, yeah, it cut out a little bit there, but I got the m most of that. Don't worry. Um, we we got to make it as easy as possible for account executives and a account managers to multi-thread deals, right? It's so critical now with the amount of competition for all solutions and the competition for attention. If we mm. can tell that person on the call who they should be referencing, it's going to make a world of a difference to to deal velocity. Yeah, yeah. Um, so brilliant. Just... And and then thinking about uh, how. Uh, you license uh, the product. I know that there are sort of more, uh, I'd say, uh, SMB focused uh, organizations where they're really targeting the individual uh, user um, to just sign up and get mm -hmm. access to a certain number of leads. H how, do, how does Cognizant approach it? 
Yeah, so we have that scalable package for those individual smaller SMB businesses where they may just have that one salesperson or one marketing individual who'll be doing a lot of this work for them. And that scales all the way up to the largest go-to-market teams on the planet, right? Where there's hundreds of users using this and what they need is uh, like a consistent operating rhythm when it comes to their prospecting. So we provide packages for both sides of those markets. Um, and and how, how is that if license have... based on a number of um, uh, users or uh, number of leads or contacts? Yeah, so it depends on the use case, right? So we touched on the sales use case there. We then have the marketing use case, which we can touch on very quickly. The sales use case is based on individual prospectors. So the amount of people with a, who are prospecting who will need a license to Cognizant. So it's yeah. an individual license model. Okay. Then when it's a marketing use case, because we need to build out larger audiences and build out um, lists of contacts for campaigns, that's where it switches over to a contact-based model. So it's depending on how you're using Cognizant. Okay, brilliant. And well, maybe that links into uh, one of your free tools on the website, which I uh, have used a number of times, which is the TAM calculator, uh, which is a yes. lovely example of, of buyer enablement for people to get in and get their first exposure of, um, uh, of Cognizant. So I guess from a marketing perspective or an operations one, it's about looking at that top level down and saying, right, we want to target uh, these countries, these industries, and how do I get an understanding of what my addressable market is and how do I start to prioritize that? Yeah, for sure. And that's where the TAM calculator connects to Cognizant's prospector tool, which, which is the central hub of everything we offer at Cognizant, right? So we have the Chrome extensions, which are, uh, are largely adopted by salespeople. Um, sometimes this tool is adopted by salespeople too, but where we see this come uh, most, most useful is for those marketing and operations use cases. The reason why is it offers very similar filters to a sales navigator, but sales navigator is limitation in list size, not having contact data, marketing and operations teams. They want to be building out larger audiences. So in a similar fashion to those filters you get on sales navigator, you have those filters here with Cognizant. A bit of an edge here is that we can start using maybe our Salesforce CRM connection to upload list of accounts. So if you've got an ABM list and you're looking to upload that for the entire business, you can upload your list of accounts into Cognizant and then use Cognizant to start identifying the specific contacts within those accounts. So mm. you map your persona ICP into the account list and you've got your audience. This again can also be used to find white space. So if we're running a really targeted ABM strategy, and we want to know where all the white space in the accounts are, we can remove the existing contacts we already have in Salesforce and mm. start to identify where the gaps are. Now we're using Cognizant to identify new stakeholders that we can push back into Salesforce to ensure that we have that healthy, full coverage within our accounts in Salesforce. So this is going to allow those bulk downloads of data if it's for something like a marketing campaign or to ensure that we're feeding the right lists to the sales team. And uh, you've got a couple of other filters there around, let's say, technologies uh, that are in use or intent. Uh, I think you partner up with Bombora on that. Uh, how are you seeing uh, companies start to use um, uh, and you've event triggers there? You know, more, um, uh, uh, yeah, more more detailed um, uh, filters to decide on who to target and when. Yeah, we've had these event triggers. Um, since we've rolled out Cognizant years ago and they still remain really, really relevant. They're kind of like the old school sales tactics that still work today. So certain triggers that can help you reach out to people who've recently joined a role within the last three, six, nine months, right? You've probably heard that stat released by LinkedIn a couple of years ago. The decision makers new to their role typically spend up to 70% of their annual budget within the first three months. That's because they've been hired. They're now rolling out that 90 day plan and they're trying to make an impression. So they're a great set of people to find straight away. Again, we can do this at a company level so we can find specific uh, companies using specific technologies, whether that's a competitor solution or a complementary solution. Like for Cognizant, there's lots of complementary tech that we want to be working with businesses if they use a certain 
um, tech stack in there, like sales tech. Again, at a company level, we can identify if companies have received certain rounds of funding, right? That's a great insight to know that they're going to be growing the team. They have budget. These are the kind of fast growing businesses that we want to be reaching. And then lastly, we have the intent from Bombora. Where this is really relevant or a little bit different to typically how other businesses may have used intent in the past, this is really like a sales level intent insight. So Bombora's buyer intent, it's helping you find businesses that are actively in market this week for solutions similar to yours. And Bombora is really special because what they specialize in is finding or using data sources that are really built around buying. And what I mean by that is it isn't someone who's just researching cybersecurity because they find it interesting. It's a bit like a comparison website. It's monitoring those types of sources where someone's comparing two different types of vendors side by side. And that suggests a buying behavior rather than someone who has an interest in a big cyber attack that happened a few weeks ago. That's kind of journalistic publications. What Bombora focuses on is those buying publications, which gives it a really powerful and potent level of insight. So you can then find and prioritize your book of business based off certain key topics provided by Bombora. There's over 14,000, so I couldn't show you them all, but that's mm. gonna help you drill down and find who are the best accounts out of my 100 accounts that I should be reaching out to this week. We may only get a list of five to 10, but that's a great place to start because we're gonna have more conversations, higher conversions, better success as they move down through the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely always um, you know, recommend to AEs or SDRs, uh, you know, intent data, uh, it's at an account level. It's not telling you you need to speak to Jim because Jim is ready to buy. But if you've got a territory yeah. and you're trying to determine where you should be applying your efforts in your territory in a particular uh, week or month, then intent helps you to direct a little bit of that, that activity. Exactly. It can be overwhelming looking at an entire account list. This helps you prioritize which accounts you should be going after first and make it a lot less overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and as, as we're coming Something... towards the end of our, our chat, um, what, what's uh, in the pipeline uh, at Cognizant that, um, that you can talk about, like what's, uh, what does the future look like in terms of the world of, of contact data? Yeah, so th the first things that I wanted to touch on there is Cognizant's done a fantastic job over recent years at improving the speed of finding the right accounts and finding the right people in those accounts. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for our customers to connect with their next buying opportunity. And our recent releases around enrichment and what we call our enrich offering are really going to supercharge that. Mm. So enrich the ability to clean in and update your existing data in Salesforce. And we can control that natively through um, this little application here in Cognizant. So we have three ways in Cognizant in which you can update and clean your existing data. Firstly, we have instant enrich. So that's any leads coming into the CRM, Cognizant can instantly update. Second of all, and it's coming out this week or next, so by the time this video goes live, it, it should be released, um, we have scheduled enrichment, which is scheduling regular enrichment jobs. For example, every Tuesday morning, we update a list in the Salesforce CRM, and we update that with up-to-date information like mobile, email, all those missing data points. Mm. And then lastly, we have CSV enrichment, which is you know, a workaround if we don't want to integrate that directly into Salesforce uh, initially by uploading CSV lists. So where Instant helps our customers most is those leads coming into the CRM are now going to be enriched with better quality data points. So what impact does that have? Things like speed to lead, it helps improve those MQL to SQL conversion metrics because we now have better identifiers on contacts coming into the CRM like inbound leads where previously there may be a missing job title, a missing mobile number, a missing email. Some sales reps would look at that and think that's not a very good lead. So what we do through the internet enrichment is provide those 
enrich data points. So they look at that and go, that's a great lead. Let's give them a call. Let's give them an email. It just automates that process mm. and it's all controlled. Yeah. No, that's lovely. And, and this is live now or it's going live uh, shortly? It's live now. It's live now. So you can apply certain rules so we can create jobs. We could call this Charlie test and we can update all contacts in Salesforce that match a certain criteria. So what if we're looking to enrich leads that come into the CRM through form fills, we could be looking to do this based off country is equal to and then United Kingdom. So what this is going to do now, Charlie, is any lead that comes into the CRM from the UK is going to be enriched with com uh, as it comes in. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that um, giving uh, SDRs and AEs the confidence in the data that they're calling into is so important. There's there's a lot of discussion at the moment about the economics of the the human SDR model and how things have changed with outbound getting getting harder, and uh, just. Yeah ensuring that people have got access to the right contact data and they're spending more time on the phone with people and less time, you know, researching or stuck in an IVR tree is, uh, uh, can only be a good thing. Yeah. One of the, so we, we run a beta test with, we've released this now, but when, when we're running the beta for that enrichment project, it reminded me of a few things that we used to do at Cognizant. Um, when, as I was, when I was an SDR, we used to go to events quite regularly. Those events would be on a Wednesday and a Thursday, two day event. And then on Friday, we had to come into the office and we'd get given a CSV file with all of the leads that we'd spoken to. And you could have spoken mm. to 200 people at that event. Your job was to get each and every one of those into the CRM, call each person and ensure it was on working by the end of that Friday. Now with something like Enrich, we can upload those into the CRM, enrich them with data points and they're already done. So that's mm. taking what is a nine hour task to a couple of clicks and you have a lot more control over that process. Yeah, yeah. Um, just allows people to get working uh, faster. Um, and as yeah. we know, like leads have a half-life. Um, if you, you speak to someone, if you're not then following them up for a week or two weeks while you're waiting to get that data in, then the moment has, uh, has, has gone. Exactly. Speed to lead, that's one of the, the key benefits here. Absolutely. Oh, well, Callum, thanks so much for giving us the background to, to Cognizant um, and, uh, and walking us through those two use cases, uh, one for the, for the sales uh, person themselves and another for the, the marketing and the operations team. Um, what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you or with Cognizant? Um, through LinkedIn or through our website, Cognizant.com. There's lots of great information and and as we've spoken about before, Charlie, like it's very specific on how we help. So if you were to have a very quick two minute look at our website, you'd get an understanding on whether it's something that could help your business. So that'd be a good place to start. All right, brilliant. Well, thanks very much for jumping on. Really appreciate it and look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you, Charlie. Really appreciate it. Great speaking.